The big news over the summer was the birth of a baby who, according to those who support an unelected head of state, will, in around 60 or more years' time, be our third such unelected head of state after the present one eventually dies. Can you see any good reason why this should be so? No, because this child will be born to do one job and one job only, which is unfair. I like my childhood and everyone in this panel, we had a choice to what we wanted to be. Um, so it's, it's more of feeling sorry for this child than anything else, that he cannot do what he wants to do. He grew to do one thing and one thing only. So for that reason, it's just wrong. It's my face of child cruelty, basically. Yeah, I think it's wrong because um, this particular child is going to be the head of an institution which perpetuates social inequality um, and deprives the, the people of this country of choosing their own head of state. So I think the whole thing is wrong. The, the child has become a symbol already um, of a system which is inherently wrong in itself. And um, in 60 years' time, it could well be that there isn't a monarchy anyway. Yeah, I would just say that you know, this child, through no fault of its own, represents the idea that some of us are born more equal than others. It, you know, in, in effect, hereditary says that one family above all others um, is, 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 is fit to uh, lead this country um, because they are God appointed. I know, because if you think about it, whether if you, your mother was a doctor, my mother was a doctor. You wouldn't necessarily say, oh, because my mother was a doctor, even though he hadn't had any, you know, qualifications for it or aptitude, which is important, um, I, should, I should become a doctor or a teacher or a brain surgeon or rocket scientist. You can think of all these things um, where inheriting a job just isn't on and it just would not work. And it's the same with leadership. It, people have got it. Like Ellen MacArthur uh, was is a sailor, but she was born in the middle of, of the country because she trained herself. She could do that job. So just because someone looks like they, they're not coming from that background to get that job, it doesn't mean they're not the best person for it. You've almost answered my next question already, but I'll, I'll ask it anyway. Can you see any bad reasons why this should be so? Just give me one. Uh, it's very bad because it makes people think that it's a foregone conclusion and makes their lives utterly hopeless because it's like the American dream is to become the president of the United States. So why shouldn't we have a British dream of becoming the top of the country? For me, it damages aspiration at a time when we're the most unequal society we've been since the monarch acceded to the throne. If you think about children in school that are sort of forced into celebrating, you know, these royal events, these weddings and these births, they're, they're basically told, this isn't for you, this isn't the life for you, but live vicariously and, you know, and, and enjoy, the, uh, enjoy the life of the elite. Yeah, for me it shows that um, people abroad will look at this country and think that we are locked into our past that we're always thinking about privilege, we're always thinking about um, tradition, but we're not really thinking about moving forward. And I think it presents this country as something of a museum piece, which it shouldn't be in the 21st century. It's bad because, as I agree with one of the points earlier, that <clears throat> I'm a champion of the uh, Human Rights Convention. Point one says that everyone's born free and equal. Well, not in this country because no day apart from one family it can be head of state, which is unfair on everybody. If some do not want to vote, do you think they should simply abstain and not try to prevent those who do want to vote from voting, from doing so? If people don't want to vote, they don't have to vote. There's no law in this country compelling people to go and vote. Um, but they don't have the right to say um, how we run our lives. Um, there's no reason why people should there's many reasons why people should vote, change our political system for the better, but there's no reason why people shouldn't. I think people should vote. Um, I'm not sure that they should be compulsory to vote. Um, but I certainly think that if people want to be um, considered truly citizens of their country, then they should, because the voting process is very much a part of who and what a citizen should be in a democracy.
I think the ability to vote and to take part in this process, it, it, it embodies an idea about democracy. I personally think we don't have much of a choice at the moment, and I think at the very least on the ballot paper, it, it should have a choice of none of the above. I tend to agree with that. In fact, we have got some brand going on about apathy and how it, that was a, a conscious choice for people not to vote. It's, it, it is important to give people the option, but they certainly shouldn't be prevented from expressing an opinion. For example, if, if you were given, you're not given the choice at all, which we're not at the moment, we have no vote with the head of state. So I think I'd, I personally like one. Can you see any democratic justification at all for an unelected head of state? None whatsoever. I, th I, th I think it's strange, really, because we, we, the politicians send people to Afghanistan, Iraq and all these places to make them into free and democratic countries. Yeah, it's a bit like the plank and the splinter um, you know, in, in the Bible about Jesus saying, oh, I'll read the splinter from your eye, but not the plank of mine. We're, we are telling them to see democracies, but yet... We're not yet one ourselves, we've never been. Yeah, I mean, I, I would echo some of those remarks, really. I, I, I think that Britain sees itself as having this role with soft power to go around the world and to sort of preach the gospel of democracy and equality. And, and, and yet, you know, we, we haven't fixed our own roof. I think um, we need to get our own house in order if we're going to... Um, perform that role and, it, and I think that monarchist justification for a head of state is it's sort of this political fudge, you know, that this idea that they're above politics and I think as, as we've heard today actually far from being above politics that, you know, the idea of monarchy actually corrupts politics, you know, this is a politician's monarchy. Um, yeah, I think the, the whole idea is totally irrational in the modern age um, and I feel that it just um, shows the country up in a bad light. I think it shows young people as well, a certain lack of um, aspiration, that there is a glass ceiling in this country um, by which they cannot rise. As a member of, permanent member of the Security Council, people look to us for a bit of guidance, for like say, how do we offer guidance of democratic principles when we don't live in a democratic country ourselves? It's a bit hypocritical of us installing our idea of democracy on someone else when we don't have it here at all. Do you think having an unelected head of state has any beneficial effect? None whatsoever. It, it means that we cannot change anything uh, about the way we're governed or ruled. We are basically uh, under a dictator, um, so there's no benefits at all. I'd rather have a system where we could have a leader who we've put there and then just as he did remove if we didn't want them. Um, no, there's no benefit to it at all. I think it also props up the political system, um, which again is resistant to change. And to have an unelected head of state um, will therefore legitimise things like an unelected House of Lords um, and so on and so forth, all the, way, all the way through the political system. So I don't see any benefit um, to it whatsoever. I mean, for me, it raises the question about legitimacy. It, 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 legitimacy doesn't arise from the will of the people, from the fact that we voted for a head of state. Where does it come from? Now, the only thing I can find, you know, going back in history, is this idea that our head of state was appointed by God. Now, I don't think many people believe, any more even Christians, that the, our queen was, you know, put there by the will of God. Which rather begs the question: Is there any legitimacy? I don't think there is. He's quite right. I'm a, I'm a Catholic Christian, and uh, I've been looking at this with the will of God. Um, there's a, a lot of illegitimate monarchs. Queen Victoria is one of them because of the, the gene, the, the porphyria and haemophilia gene. I just found out from reading Katie Kelly's The Royals that the Queen Mother was actually illegitimate and the Queen was actually born, born by artificial insemination. So I don't think God really would have made that in existent. And there's a, a lot of others like um, Henry VIII's um, grandfather. Um, and, and other other ones. I think that's the right one, but it's one of the tu early Tudors. And um, so they, they say it's the will of God, but um, quite frankly, it's the will of money. Because another biblical uh, um, analogy I'd use is the when Jesus shows a coin, and he says, which head is this to do with paying taxes and 
He said, pay to Caesar what belongs to Caesar, Caesar's hair, and pay to God what belongs to God. So actually, what the Queen is, she's contrary to the Gospel, yet she claims to be a head of a faith that is supposed to be Christian. Money and God is one of the choices you're supposed to make. Money or God. Thank you all very much. Thank you.